The dwarven mountain home had everything it could possibly need. Metals, jewels, engravings on every single inch of their caverns. But one thing they'd seemed to lack was the ability to make soap. You see, to make soap, you require clay. And there's very little clay down in the mountains. And so these seven dwarves have been commissioned by the High King to start a new outpost not too far from their dwarven homes and make soap. And this is their story. Hello, welcome to a new uh, year in a new series. Uh, this is going to be a shorter series in which we're going to follow these seven dwarves in their quest to make a soap making empire off in this, uh, in this new world. We're playing Dwarf Fortress today. And something I've learned from playing Dwarf Fortress a few times this past, uh, this past month is that it's not good to uh, set off with a very huge goal and ignore your dwarves well-beings. So I've used a very basic setup, just a quick, quick embarkment for these dwarves. And um, we're going to make sure that they have what they need before going on our grand quest to make soap. Um, as we can see, we have some animals along for the ride. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set up a pen for these animals. I'm also thinking, as we have a brook here, we should make the entrance to our, uh, our, our dwarven fortress around here. So let's go ahead, set up a pen for them, make sure the animals are all set to the pen, even the dogs and cats. Um, they're nice companions to have, but for some reason the dwarves really enjoy having other animals as companions than these. Uh, so we're just going to leave them in the pasture for now. It'll be fine. Okay. Next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set up a uh, spot for fishing. I may have clicked the wrong button there. Here we go. And we're going to do this right next to this, this brook. Here we go. So our fisher dwarf will be able to come here and gather probably mussels uh, to feed our fortress. And as a precaution, we're also going to set up a drinking area. This should be a safe drinking spot. So we're going to make sure if they run out of ale, uh, gods forbid, they will be able to still drink water and not just die. Otherwise, this area that we have embarked upon is very barren there are no trees so we are going to have to do a little bit of mining and hopes to get wood uh sorry stone first uh, down in the mines and then later on in the caverns find some uh, mushroom woods to be able to uh, build beds for these dwarves because they won't have any so we're just gonna scroll in here and set up a few quick labors Thank you, helpful tooltips. Uh, we're going to make sure that only the fisher dwarf is fishing, good. Only the minor dwarves are mining, only the woodcutter dwarves are woodcutting. This is all fantastic. Next, we're going to set up a dig order for them to start building their uh, dwarven fortress. It's probably not the best idea to build right next to the brook, but we're gonna go about halfway between that and where they've set up their wagon here just um, maybe a, a, a two by two area and we're going to scroll this down oh we are actually quite high I've just seen the elevation uh, up up in the uh, the mountains right now uh, sometimes it goes down to almost zero or ten uh, when you start out the fort here we go so I've queued this up and we're going to let them first off they should be moving the animals to their new pen area and then the um, mining dwarf should start digging downwards. Now, as we are right next to a brook, I'm expecting that we are going to hit um, an aquifer level before we actually hit stone. Oh, it looks like I might be wrong. Okay, let's give it a little pause here. So, damp stone located, yes. And if we click on this, we go down to the level right below where they were already digging. So this is where the aquifer starts, which means we do actually have hewn uh, sandstone walls here that we'll be able to mine out and hopefully get the stone we need to start setting up a base of operations 
and of course to be able to um, dig down into this aquifer. And we'll get there when we get there though. Let's start off by just digging over here and perhaps we don't have beds yet but we could uh, set up a little area for them to uh, build beds when they're ready, a little dormitory of sorts. Let's just start this. Our miner is going to go ahead and dig away at these walls now. Ah, and we've already uncovered some sandstone. Fantastic. So we're going to have a new workshop for stone workers right outside this mine entrance here. And they should be building that quite quickly. And let's take a look at the dwarf building our new dormitory area. We've gotten more sandstone, two more, three more. Fantastic. We have access to some stone. The other thing that's quite lucky uh, that uh, we, we've we hit stone before we hit the aquifer level is that uh, these this area that we can't currently see, but if I scroll my mouse, damp hewn stone, um, it means that the dwarves will be digging through stone where there is water, so we will be able to smooth out the walls as we go down. I'm just going to give it a pause here. We don't want time to pass too, too quickly away from us. We are going to uh, queue up some orders. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, it's not possible to make beds out of stone, unfortunately. These dwarves do enjoy their uh, wooden beds, but what we can do is make some blocks. They'll be easier to carry for the dwarves when we want to make uh, new workshops like we've already done. I'm just going to queue these up forever. I don't think we have that much stone. One, two, three, four, five. We have five stone. Okay, we'll just leave them to that. Next thing we're going to want to do is continue to dig down. Now our goal here is to hit a cavern level layer for two reasons. The first is that we'll have access to uh, wood in the form of giant mushrooms. Giant mushrooms are important in this game, mostly when uh, you have such a barren area such as we have, because you will be able to uh, use them as a source of wood. The second reason we want to get down to the cavern layers is that farm plots are actually much better down in, uh, in the caverns than if we were to just, you know, put them on the surface or even put them right here. So, uh, see we're digging through the aquifer and as we can see, I'll pause the game so we don't get uh, too damp, but as we can see, it's already uh, starting to flood. So, flooding only happens with uh, natural stone or natural uh, elements such as dirt. Uh, it doesn't happen if you do something like smooth the wall or replace the walls. So the hope here is that we'll be able to smooth them fast enough so that this area just stays a little damp and doesn't get completely flooded. One of seven water should be okay, but we don't want it to hit something like three. I'm going to let them do that. There we go. And now everything has been uh, smoothed out. And here we go. So we do have some water in here. One of seven, one of seven, one of seven. We should be able to dig down at least one more layer uh, without that being an issue. But at some point we may have to stop and wait uh, for the, these areas, areas to dry up. So let's just go ahead, queue up a little bit more digging down. And I think I'm going to uh, jump cut to when these dwarves have managed to hit a cavern layer. And we are back. Um, so we have, as you can now see, hit a cavern layer, but there is a few issues with this cavern layer in particular. First off, if we go and check the mining tool, every single wall here is wet. And I was a little concerned about this. I was worried that we were actually in an aquifer layer and that uh, our cavern would constantly get flooded. But actually, if I scroll right over here, we can see open space water seven of seven. Not only is this area quite wet, um, it is it is underwater. Uh, this, this is a bit of a problem, but if I scroll back up, one block. Here we go. We can see that there's this little island here. 
uh, outside of the water and it is dry so I'm thinking our dwarves could instead of going down here just dig over here and use this little island as a bit of a underground base of operations we won't have access to very much um, of these mushrooms of these uh, tower cap trunks uh, mushrooms but we will have access to the ground which we're going to need to be able to uh, grow our food uh, stuff for drinking and also down the line our soap making stuff the downside however is that we are right at the edge of the map here so this is going to be a little bit um, tricky for the dwarves to figure out but I think I think they're resourceful enough for this to work so thing number one we're going to have our minor dwarf dig all the way to here and we'll have a nice open uh, pathway here and once they get here we'll start using some of the stone blocks we've been building to make a little ramp over to this island of uh, not being underwater we'll just go ahead and have this start up and we're going to have to keep a lookout for ooh, I was going to say a lookout for parts of this that aren't underwater um, like this of this cavern uh, that aren't um, also at the border of the the map the issue with the border of the map is that animals can come in forgotten beasts can come in and we don't really have any protection against that um, so this is going to be a little tricky what I'm thinking is we'll be able to uh, when we have enough stone blocks build a wall here so any forgotten beast that tries to come in will be just stuck and we'll have to like wander the caverns in another direction that is the hope um, we'll see if that works out but right now our main important uh, thing to do is to make sure we have access to this wood so that our dwarves can have a play a place to rest their heads originally I was going to have uh, the dwarves build their dormitory up here but I'm thinking it might be a good idea to build it closer to where they'll be working so we're going to wait until this is done not queue up too much uh, if I can restrain myself on that which is always an issue I always end up just queuing up a thousand things and then wondering why the dwarves haven't moved forward on any of the projects uh, just keep shifting the goalpost but uh, here we go now we'll be able to set up some floors and as we can see we already have some stone blocks going so let's use some clay stone blocks here they'll start building this little ramp over to this area and then our miner will be able to continue and we'll have access to this very small island of uh, dense floor fungus which is going to be amazing for us um, and our dwarves to be able to do some farming on here we go we have um, our miner who's about to finish here and soon actually when she or he let's take a look actually this miner yes this is a she Ravod Helm Clobbers fascinating I'm not sure how their family got that name but it sounds sounds great um, okay she has high willpower good intuition uh, she's not creative she seeks harmony uh, poor spatial sense which is probably not the best when you're a minor but you know that's fine I guess um, and some other stuff that we won't be reading right right now that's not that important what is important is that she now has access to uh, our our little island of hope over here there we go and once she gets a little bit closer we're going to start um, queuing up the job to dig out our new dormitory for our dwarves here we go she now has access to this area fantastic we are going to tell our uh, woodcutter to come over and start cutting these logs now luckily for us trees do eventually grow back on on a dense fungus floor you can see that there is a young fungi wood over here uh, and a young tower cap over here and so on they will eventually grow into larger trees that we can cut down for wood Ooh, we may not need wood for a while however uh, as we can see there is a lot 
of tower catalogs here. Uh, that's going to be very useful for us. Mm, our dwarves are already sleeping on the floor. Well, it is late spring, so it's probably been like a few months that they've been up there. Not the best. I also have some plans for this uh, underwater part because there is a way to pump out liquids such as water. And if you do so at the edge of the map, um, I'm fairly certain it just drains out, which, you know, could be two birds with one stone, really. Um, we're also going to need an area to work the wood. So let's queue that up. Uh, three by three is what we need for the workshop. Oh, what's this? Let's give it a little pause. It seems there is something walking along here. Open space. Are they swimming? These are troglodytes. 18-year-old troglodyte over here. Um, let's find out a little bit more about them, actually. Let's see. He is indefatigable. Okay. He doesn't get tired, I guess. Uh, quite quick to heal and strong. He is tall, very skinny, short, narrow nose is upturned. His somewhat narrow ears have nearly fused lobes. Interesting. He has a prominent chin. His pale pink eyes are slightly close set. His hair is cinnamon. His skin is pale pink. Very interesting. Um, I don't know if there's a way, no relations. Uh, to find out if they're aggressive, I don't believe troglodytes are, but we may have a nasty surprise if it turns out I'm wrong. Let me just scroll up, scroll down, and they must be swimming because they're, this is water right under. It says open space where they're currently, or maybe they're walking along the walls. That'd be crazy. We also have this cave spider over here uh, who's spreading some silk web, which is actually quite nice for us. Uh, but we'll get back to that later on. All right, back to focusing on our main tasks. So we're going to have a craftsman, uh, not a craftsman, um, carpenter's area over here. So let's also clear up some of this space for the logs. Ooh, let's go like this. That should be enough space for placing the logs and the carpenter's bench. Right now, our miner is not actually digging that's probably because she's sleeping um so it'll be good to have some beds set up sooner rather than later let's see i don't see her anywhere right now we've got an axe maybe she's gone down hmm. let's take a look down back at the caverns ah she's already digging fantastic okay so workshops and we are going to make sure we got the carpenter. And once she clears out this 3x3 three three area, we'll plop it down. We don't need to wait for everything. Here we go. Blocked at this location. No, I, I was just clicking wrong. It's fine. Okay, let's use some stand, sandstone blocks on this. That should be good. And as we have quite a bit of uh, stone blocks, what I'm also going to do is queue up some uh, walls to be built so that things like troglodytes don't come into our living space. Here we go. Here we go. Five. And if I scroll up, ah, this is actually open air up here. So it won't stop flying creatures or climbing creatures from coming in, just making these walks, uh, walls, sorry. But um, it should stop most uh, smaller nasty things from coming in. So let's just go ahead and queue up uh, some walls real quick. We'll stop as much as we can things coming in from here. We'll have to squish this little guy. And I believe, oh, am I incorrect? I was gonna say, I believe we can't build on the wall, but apparently, like on the, on the edge of the map, but apparently we can. Okay, all right, well, I've learned something. Fantastic. Let's let the dwarves do what they do best in the background as we queue up some more walls. And oh, I've just seen the carpenter's area area. Carpenter's workshop uh, has has been completed. So let's queue up a few beds. Uh, there are seven dwarves. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 
Seven beds is what we're going to need. We might have some migrants. I may be turning them around uh, when they come. I haven't decided yet. Uh, the thing with having migrants is, you know, more hands make lighter work. It, this is true, but it also makes more uh, bellies to fill. And we haven't really set up this uh, this enterprise yet. We've, we've just now gotten to the point where we're, we have access to wood. Um, so we'll see how... We'll see how we feel when we get there. Uh, what else could we build? We're going to need some bins to put things in, some barrels to put food in as such. And let's let them do their do their thing for now. There we go. And with these walls, we want to make sure that the dwarves uh, don't leave diagonal gaps such as this because they are actually able to pass from like this position over to this position uh, so we want to make sure everything is well closed up oh they're getting thirsty well we do have we do have stuff to drink and we will soon be uh building what we need um, to our farm plots and such to uh actually be able to you know ha have some new drinks for them hmm i may have gone a little bit this one okay uh let us let us take another little a little cut, jump cut uh as i go ahead and set up a little bit more of this underground area we'll be right back and we are back uh a bit of time has passed it's already midsummer now and as you can see uh we have this area completely blocked off now or at least i hope it is uh, we have some farm plots up and running, uh, one for uh, plump caps, plump helmets, and the other one for quarry bushes. The quarry bushes are going to be used down the line to make our oil, uh, to make our soap, but the- ooh, one moment, pausing. Uh, let's just go- it seems- it seems we have some migrants uh, coming in. How long ago have they come in? Ooh, okay. I have no idea which one are migrants and which ones aren't. There is now a population of nine. Now, nine isn't that bad for us right now. It, well, let's, let's leave it paused as we go back down to our fortress down in the caves. As we can see, um, other than these might be the new migrants. Okay. Uh, as I was saying, as we can see, we do have a dormitory now. I put in a little bookshelf and I put one extra bed. So we do have place for one extra dwarf. Um, I think this might not be an issue right now. As it's a dormitory, the dwarves are kind of communally using it. And it, as long as they don't all try to sleep at the exact same time, they should be absolutely fine. Um, yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> So they can they can use up this space as they will. I'll leave it paused as I explain the changes so we don't get surprised once again. Uh, we have this little kitchen area over here. So we have a still to be able to make um, drinks. We have a kitchen to be able to make food. And we have a fishery to be able to process some of the raw mussels that we've been uh, catching up at the surface with our fisher dwarf. This is good. So we have a full a full functioning way of being able to get fed and a farm plot to be able to make more plump helmets to be able to make more drinks so we're we've got food sorted out drinks sorted out seeds potentially sorted out if i don't screw up how farming works i i think we'll be fine um my understanding is as long as you turn plump helmets into drinks you do get access to plump helmet spawns which will allow you to grow more plump helmets they're essentially seeds um, so it looks like we have quite a few of them. This should be perfect. I've also set up, uh, plump helmets to only be used in drinks. Uh, and I believe for when we have quarry bushes, if we, um, down the line, turn them into oil, they should also be giving us seeds. So we should have the seeds sorted out. Now meats, um, we don't, we don't really have a way. Actually, we have some sad news if we scroll back up to the surface layer here um, you can see that our pasture has been attacked there's a rotten stray water buffalo over here um, there's uh, no that's a toad there's another water buffalo that's dead over here um, we were attacked by dingoes at some point now 
my dwarves are perfectly fine. They haven't been injured in any way, so we're good on that. However, yeah, we've lost quite a few animals. If we take a look at our livestocks right now, uh, we still have all the dogs. We still have all the cats. We have a single stray yak somewhere. Uh, and we have a single horse. We lost two horses. Oh, that's sad. Uh, we have a donkey. And somehow our peacock has survived. I don't exactly know what you're supposed to do with peacocks. Uh, but we do have some of the animals. We will want to, down the line, uh, wall them in, I think. And keep them safe from the dingoes. Uh, if they do come around this area. So... Uh, we have uh, potentially meat sorted out. I mean, it's not it's not the end of the world if we don't have meat, as we do have fish. Um, so, we have our bases pretty much set now. I also set up a little um, eating area, dining area, over here, and a little temple over here. That's not set to any particular dwarven god. Actually, let's go ahead and queue up a door for that so that uh, they can have a little bit of privacy. Um, and we could also, we might as well use the other door over here. All right, uh, I have my uh, crafts dwarfs, carpenter dwarf over here, uh, working on some barrels so we'll be able to store more food and seeds and so on. Actually, seeds, that's a good, that's a good, uh, that's a good idea. Let's set them up to have seeds over in this corner right next to the farm plots and we're going to this is going to be a little bit of a pain to get in contact with let's click on food just set that to none and if i go down to seeds i should have access to all these now the question not, not actually let's just let's just set them up i was going to say the question is once we try to turn the quarry bushes into um oil does that use these seeds i can't remember and I'm not going to worry about it. Let's just have this sorted out over here. Um, otherwise, we also have this um, this stone mason area over here. So we're moving all of our stuff as much as we can um, down here. Ooh, as much as it can. Actually, that is a question. Can we move our pasture down here as well? Will the horses and yaks and so on eat the mushroom fungus floor. Hmm, I've never tried that. Let's let's take a let's take a try. Let's just make it nice and slim this pasture, but long. Here we go. As such, except we're going to set every single animal down here. Hopefully, this keeps them safe. Oops, from the dingoes. Right, and we're going to go back up to the surface and select this one, and we're just going to remove it. Here we go. The dwarves should be moving our animals. Oh no, the animals are going on their own. Well, some of them anyway. The peacocks stayed up there. Okay, and we'll find out if, they, if they're if they happy in the, the mycelial floors. Uh, Stray has been missing for a week. Okay, yeah. We lost that. We lost that bull. Fantastic. Um, so with this, our bases are pretty much set for the time being. Uh, we are going to be able to move on to, in the next episode, our actual goal for these dwarves down in these caverns to be able to make a soap-making empire for the for the dwarves, uh, a company, but the Avon of, uh, you know, d the dwarven empire. And I think that's great. <laughs> uh, so for today, we're going to call it here. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this little episode. Um, that you enjoyed your, uh, you know, winter holidays, no matter what they might be, if you have any, for that matter. And uh, I'll see you next week. Goodbye.